Many people have some kind of a victim story going on inside their consciousness. This is the wounded child that wasn't listened to by mommy or daddy, or it was rejected by mommy or daddy, or it was kicked in the butt by mommy or daddy, or even smacked in the face by mommy or daddy, or even sexually abused by mommy or daddy. Um, and when these experiences happen, especially at an early age, we don't have the mechanisms to cope with it. So in a sense, we're storing this trauma for later on to be dealt with. This is natural as far as natural, as far as these things are natural. This is natural. This is the way it is. So we don't at those, um, at those levels of our brain development, we don't have the tools. We don't have the consciousness to, in a way, um, handle those traumatic experiences and channel them and integrate them and heal them and acknowledge them appropriately. So usually what happens is that a few years after they've happened, we start to suppress them. We start to even forget about these things to an extent. And then years later, they start to resurface and they start to cause us more problems than they seemingly did in our teenage years, perhaps. Uh, this is just general speaking. This doesn't apply to everyone in that way. But this is just one example of how this trauma can develop itself. So first it's really intense. We don't have any way to cope with it. Then over the course of several years, we start to just sort of almost forget about it. And sometimes people literally forget about their sexual abuse or otherwise. And they literally, at the age of 35, they remember, oh my God, I've been abused by this person or that person when I was at this age. And they actually did not remember for 20 years. So this is because we can't cope with it and it doesn't serve us for it to be present to us until we reach a vibrational level of consciousness where we gain the tools to integrate and learn from these experiences. And then these things at the right timing will start to resurface to us. Or even if we did remember them, but vaguely, they start to become more in our face again. We start to feel limited by them in our endeavors. We start to feel hurt by them again. So at these times, the wounded inner child, and also the wounded inner child can be as simple as daddy didn't listen to my plan to save the world. Okay, it doesn't always have to be sexual abuse. We all have different ways of being sensitive and different lessons. Um, so if, if our parents are simply just harsh with us or don't really see us for who we are, that can also be very painful for the inner child. So don't judge the inner child based on like, well, other people are sexually abused and I haven't been, so I should get over myself. Yes, you should. But the way to do that is acknowledgement. It's self-love. Right? It's always self-love. It starts with self-love and it ends with self-love. And in the end, self-love is love for all that is because the self is all that there is. So self-love can take you all the way from start to completion, to infinity. It's the gate. Love is the gate. So how do we best access or heal the wounded inner child? Acknowledgement, first of all. <clears throat> If, you, if we take the system of the chakras for a second, and I don't talk about this often, but there is some reality to this. There is reality to these um, different spectrums of light, of the full spectrum of white light. There is these seven spectrums that we, as an individuation, are emanating, are created out of and as. So experiences are always filtered through first survival, or what you could call the first chakra, then um, a personal identity, then uh, our relationship with the world and other people, or the third, um, then through love and, and the expansion of understanding or compassion, then through authentic expression and the emerging of wisdom, then through um, the center of unity and light, and then ultimately through universal oneness or seeing the cosmic unity of it all.